Hello and welcome to the Good Timekeeping Show. My name is Greg Anderson and this is a quick episode. I want to show you some of the diagnostic screens on some of these uh, Casio G-Shock watches. Uh, well, like these two right here. Let's take a look at these real quick. This one is the GW7900 with module 3193 and this is the GW9110 with module 3217. They're almost identical as far as the, the face of the watch goes and all the functions are the same. There's just a little bit different, uh, you know, th this one has a, a button here for the light and this one doesn't have a separate button for the light, but the light's up there. So uh, to get into the diagnostic screens on this, it's basically the same thing, but let me just show you on, uh, well, let's start with this one. I should mention that this isn't in the manual and this isn't going to enhance your user experience very much. It's just another thing to know about your watch. Uh, and again, it's not in the manual, so that's why I'm telling you about it so you'll know. Now in the manual, a lot of times it'll label these buttons A, B, C, and D, and then the light button down there. And so to get into the diagnostics, you're going to have to press three buttons at once. And we'll start with pressing every button except this one. See what happens if I can do this. Uh, I'm coordinated enough to get it right. Oh, okay. No, I didn't get it right. Ah, there we go. I did it. Okay, so uh, I, I pressed this button a little bit sooner than the other three. And right here in this screen, it's referring to the, the atomic time receiver. And so this is trying to receive information from several atomic time transmitters in different parts of the world. This is one from Japan. And that 40 refers to a 40 kilohertz carrier wave for the data that's coming from that particular transmitter. If I push this button down here, then that's the other one from Japan. It's a 60 kilohertz carrier wave. Push this again, and there's a U for the United States because the one in the United States is also a 60 kilohertz carrier wave. This one in Germany, I'm told, is a 77.5 kilohertz carrier wave. And there's the one in the UK. And so this is referring to the different transmitters that this watch is trying to receive when it's trying to receive its atomic time data to keep itself set to the right time. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, the timekeeping mode, pressing this button here. And now we're, now we're back to regular timekeeping mode. I'm going to try and do the next combination of buttons. And there we go. This is the LCD diagnostic uh, stuff. So right here, most of the LCD segments are visible when I do this. If I push this button here, then it's showing me this number here in 3193. It looks like that is referring to the module for this watch. And then push again, Denver, because this watch is set to have Denver as the, the home time at this time. Uh, and here's, here's a, an LCD diagnostic uh, where every single segment that could be visible on the LCD panel is visible now. And there are only some of them, so it's making funny patterns and things there. And now we're back to regular timekeeping mode. Okay, next I'm going to try this combination of buttons. And this is the tilt test. You see, this watch has the ability to automatically turn on the backlight when you tilt the watch towards yourself and when the watch is in a dark enough situation. So uh, this, this is just a little test to show you that the tilt sensor is working. If I tilt that up enough, okay, there I go. So as I tilt it back away from me, like I'm not looking at it, uh, those digits disappear. And then as I tilt it towards myself as though I wanna look at the time, then those digits appear. And so that's just showing me when the watch will automatically turn on that backlight if I have that uh, function enabled. Okay, there's the tilt test. So now let's go back and do one last test here on the diagnostics. And SLR refers to the solar cell. So there is a solar cell built into the face of the watch to keep its uh, power source charged. And well, if, uh, if I cover this up, then that's going to say that there was a change and so those digits appear and that's all that's the test it, these these digits won't come and go you'll have to restart the test in order to make them go away but so, so that's it that's that's how it works and if i did the same thing on this other watch uh you know it's going to do it's going to going to behave the same way so just to quickly show you if i do these buttons here okay again it's showing me the different transmitters do the next test and uh, let's see there. Now that's the, my LCD test. And uh, again, for some reason, I don't know why this shows me this number 3193, same as the other 
watch, although this watch does not have the module number 3193. So I'm not quite sure why it shows that. Okay. And well, anyway, those those are all the tests that, that uh, you know, it does the same thing if I were to go through all of them on this watch as well. So there you go. It's just another something you can know about your G-Shock watch. Many other G-Shock watches behave in a similar way if you uh, push combinations of buttons to get to the diagnostic screens on those G-Shock watches. All right, I'll have another episode of the Good Timekeeping Show coming soon. So thank you for watching.